Welcome to Design for the Creative Mind, a podcast for interior designers and creative entrepreneurs to run their business with purpose, efficiency, and passion. Because while every design is different, the process should remain the same. Prepare yourself for some good conversations with amazing guests, a dash of Jesus, and a touch of the woo-woo, and probably a swear word or two. If you're ready to stop trading your time for money and enjoy your interior design business, you are in the right place. I'm your host, Michelle Lynn. Well, hello, everybody. Welcome back. I'm Michelle Lynn, and I want to introduce my guest to you today. Her name is Tanya Comer, and she has been named one of the top 20 African-American interior designers in the United States. She is principal of the boutique interior design firm, Tanya Comer Interiors. She is an award-winning product designer with products that have sold around the globe. She is also a global transformation leader and a community and business thought leader. As an author, she is on a mission to help women find wholeness through discovery of their shame and self-doubt. And Tanya takes great pride in being a thrill-seeking, roller coaster loving jump-out-of-a-plane-first spirit who lives life out loud. Tanya, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. Oh my gosh, Lynn. It's, uh, Michelle, it's so great to see you. It's oh my so gosh. great to see you. And I think I was, I was, I'm just joking. I'm just laughing because we were just talking about for the last couple of years that I've known you because you went through the interior design business bakery. Your last name has been Comer, but I have just always been Comer. It's like in my head, it's Tanya Comer. So I really think that this can manifest you a life in Paris soon. I think so. (laughs) I'm so, I would total, when I was in high school, Michelle, I was convinced that I was going to go into fashion design marry a Frenchman, live in a chateau and speak French and oh, we, oui, we, oui, and <laughs> give a so, you know, yes. I'm here to help you there. I'm here to bon help sure, you there. If bon nothing sure. else, I'm just calling you uh, by your last name with a French, uh, French twist to it. <laughs> but <laughs> it's so good to see you and to have you here. And I know that with all the things that you have going on, our audience is just going to love hearing your story and what you have going on as well. Thank you so much. Thank you for the invitation to be with you today. I oh, I'm super that. excited. So Tanya, when we were speaking previously, you had mentioned that your life journey started with your mother holding you and crying on a park bench as she realized that she was homeless. Can you, like, how, how has that impacted your life? Like, where does that, where does that bring you? Yeah. You know, first I want to say that my life journey is one of those things that I am most proud of today, but it wasn't always like that. There was a time in my life when I was just consumed by that particular data. I was, um, my mom was, had her own history of Mm -hmm. uh, a troubled childhood and um, teenage years. And she was 20 when she gave birth to me and um, she didn't have a place to take me to. And wow. she cried on a park bench and an angel showed up and answered my mom's cry and her prayers and led us and got us to a government housing project. And that's where I grew up. Oh, wow. I was raised by a single parent, raised in a government housing project. And, you know, it, the way it impacted my life, Michelle, was I began to feel at some point in my life like I was less than. Mm-hmm. And so I carried around shame attached to being someone who's less than in the world. And it was a a traumatic experience to see how I had been embodying less than. And I had had lots of accomplishments in my life. I graduated high school, top of my class. I went to a very expensive liberal arts college graduated top of class. I worked multiple jobs. I was climbing the corporate ladder. I found my passion for interior design, Mm -hmm. built an interior design firm, but still there was this little girl inside me that felt less than. And so on the outside, I'm walking around the world with my designer label clothes and my high heels. Right. But on the inside, I was a mismatch with what you could see on the outside. I was in a cage, you know, 
Yeah. And I think that's so interesting because like you said, from the outside, it just wasn't congruent with what you were feeling. And so that had to be really difficult to navigate as you were growing up. Yeah. And as I became an adult and started to launch a business and, you know, we call that imposter syndrome, Right, I felt like a fraud and I I had to wear this mask so that I could fit in. Right. I had to feel like I belonged in this world because in my mind, I felt like someone who was less than, Mm -hmm. and, uh, it was part of the, the, the biggest part of it, Michelle was when I hit rock bottom. Hmm. And one of the things I did was I sabotaged everything because I didn't believe I was deserving or worthy of it. So the success I was having as an interior designer being named one of the top 20, mm-hmm. the A-list clients that I was working with, the life that I imagined for myself, I never felt that I was deserving of any of that. So I sabotaged it. Right. I was dang near bankrupt. I was at the time I uh, had the the hit rock bottom. I was separated from my husband. I maxed out my credit cards to stay afloat. And I had been so, I caused myself so much internal stress that it caused me to physically be ill. And I was diagnosed with a life-threatening illness. Oh my gosh. That is rock bottom. Right? Yeah. That's rock bottom. And Hitting rock bottom was the best thing that happened because it allowed me to begin to look inside of myself, break up all that stuff that was all uh, false. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the stories you were telling yourself. Truth. Absolutely. And begin to own my truth. And the truth, that's why I can say to you today that I am most proud of my journey mm-hmm. because it has been that my journey that has inspired me to do the work I want to do to support women with the book that we uh, will be talking about and the mission that I'm on. Oh, I love that. And what a, what a great mindset that you have, Tanya, to recognize that even though life was not picture perfect or what you would have imagined, that it was the exact journey that you needed to get you where you are today. And you're launching into this next chapter, (laughs) pun intended, (laughs) Um, with, with that as, you know, your foundation and your grounding and, and that you have aligned your internal and your external personas for lack of a better term and, and are moving forward. So that's, I think that is fantastic because not everybody maybe takes the time to examine it or, or gets thrown to rock bottom where they have to. Right. So you're on a mission now to help what a million women, I believe. Absolutely. Yeah. So that they can find their wholeness. And you say it's through discovering their own shame and their self-doubt, which I I know we all have that. I mean, yeah, myself is like way up there as well. How did you go from being an interior designer? Because that's, that's how we met to wanting to help women in, in this way. Yeah. Thanks for that question, Michelle. It's interesting. So I have to tell this because it's kind of funny. I've never been one to really pay attention to Zodiacs. Mm -hmm. But for one, on this particular day recently, I was inspired to go. Someone was talking about Zodiacs and compatibilities and all these things. And I was like, oh, what are they talking about? So I Googled my Zodiac. I'm a Taurus. Oh, me too. When's your birthday? You are too? Uh Uh-huh. Fourth. I'm the sixth. Oh, Michelle, I love you already. I knew it. (laughs) There we go. And so this this is so fascinating to me that Mm -hmm. the Taurus has three things that are really, uh, that are characteristic to us. We're humanitarians. Mm -hmm. We we are ruled by the the God Venus, the God of love and beauty. Mm. And we celebrate and enjoy all things beautiful. So- Tanya is a humanitarian. Uh huh. Tanya, her whole mission now is about love. And I've created this life as to celebrate beauty as an interior designer. So oh. I thought, well, hokey smokes, I'm going about just living my life, doing what I do, loving what I love. And maybe there's this physics out here that's supporting me in this way, you know, and that's, 
that's talking about who I am as a person, but why did I do this? What internal, what was my internal drive? Mm -hmm. It was, I recognized that when I was seven years old, you know, and people were always asked the seven-year-old, so what do you want to be when you get older? Right. There were the doctors and the lawyers and the basketball players and the rap professional rappers in my neighborhood. All of that. <laughs> <laughs> but there's little Tanya that's like, I want to spread love around the globe. Oh, and wow. I didn't know what that meant. Mm-hmm. I knew that I had this, this desire, this drive to bring happiness and bring joy and bring bring connection to people. And so when I hit rock bottom, I asked the question, why, why is this happening to me? Mm -hmm. Why this, why me, why now, why? And the answer that I got back was that my pain, my suffering Mm -hmm. is not for me. It's so that I can teach what I learn in this journey of rebuilding my life to help other women elude their pain, their shame, their Mm self-doubt. So every tear that I've cried, every pain that I felt, all the illness that I suffered, all of it is for the purpose of helping other women find their way to wholeness. Oh, I love that. And you could have hidden under a rock, but you didn't, you've chosen not to. Here's that little seven-year-old getting Mm -hmm. her wish to be able to spread love around the globe. Oh. How, you know, for it to a million women, no less. Yeah, that's, that's so fantastic. So it's, it's been a natural progression. And interestingly enough, your, your life and like you said, the physics around it, you know, have supported it the whole time. Whole time. So do you remember Nicole Leno? our master coach that was doing mindset or she still is in the bakery. She has a podcast and it's called the limitless entrepreneur. So y'all should be listening to that too. Um, But she talks a lot about human design and how like a lot of the, um, the facets of the, you know, of the, of the universe. And you know, that I love Jesus. I believe that God created all of these tools that we, that we use or that we have been born into and maybe don't use, but she talks a lot about it. And it's so interesting to see how these things that are destined for lack of a better term, when we step into ourselves and become who we are supposed to be and just be ourselves, that it, it shows up there. And it's like, it's not a surprise. It's like, Oh my gosh, I recognize that. So it's, it's amazing. If you get the chance to listen to her podcast, I think, some of this might even just give some ahas from Absolutely. your standpoint. Absolutely. Really cool. It's so true. We manifest that, which mm-hmm. we desire most. Yeah. And, and stepping into that wholeness that you have, I don't want to say found, but created for yourself. Right. Hey, y'all. As my interior design business grew, there were some struggles that quickly surfaced. It was balancing, management, just all of the things that come together and especially when it came to consolidating my marketing efforts, my client relationship management, social media planning, website building, all the things. I felt like Dr. Frankenstein just trying to tie all of these things together and it didn't really come out very pretty. I thought it would be great if I could find something that would bring everything together into one place. And I believe I have found it. The support of Sidemark, growing your interior design business has never been easier. It will be available this spring. Sidemark is an all new, all in one software that organizes sales, marketing and business services all in one convenient location. By signing up for Sidemark, you too can get access to all of the essential tools needed to help your business succeed with features such as a built-in website builder, a custom sales pipeline, email marketing, client relationship management, scheduling on a calendar, and more. This is going to expand your interior design business and make it a breeze. Go online now to join the waitlist at mysidemark.com you will receive 10% off your first year and get notified of all of the new and exciting updates yet to come. Visit mysidemark.com.
www.thrivingmomsmentorship.com to start your journey towards successful business growth without the stress and join mysidemark.com today. You won't be sorry. So let's talk about your book. Yes. You are, you, we were talking about power tools and you're using that as a model. Yep. And, and the name of your book is In High Heels on a Ladder. And it's the seven power tools for designing your life, which ties back to your interior design background. And right. it just, again, is just a little bow on, yes. uh, on the, your entire being. So yeah. tell us about the book. Tell me. I'm yeah. so, Let super me curious. Let's start with the title. Um, okay. So I found, I don't know if you've had this experience, Michelle, but I certainly have, that I had to figure out a way to survive these construction trade guys, right? <laughs> So, <laughs> yeah, um, you know, so there's ageism, there's sexism, and they certainly don't necessarily value interior designers very much. So I have to mm-hmm. figure out how to play their game. So I developed a way to do that. I show up in my high heels on a construction site. <laughs> I have the shiniest, biggest tape measure that I could possibly have. I had one called the Johnson. And I love the double entendre of the Johnson. Uh, 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 yes. <laughs> did you and bedazzle I, it? I totally <laughs> did. And I enjoyed, I, I welcomed the opportunity to figure out a way to like have the men, have their wall just go down. And I figured out how to do that. So at some point, you know, we're walking a job site and there'll be all this conversation, all the technical stuff. And I'm doing this, well, we're going to have this year and that there and blah, blah, blah. And at some point, inevitably, I would pull out the tape measure and one of the guys would attempt to pretend like they're going to help me. Like, of course, this poor little lady doesn't know how to handle the tape measure. So <laughs> I would perform my magic tricks and then eventually look for that perfect opportunity to say these words. I can do anything you can do while holding a power tool, standing on a ladder in high heels. And of course, it would tear the walls down. The guys would laugh. There would be side chatter. And I won favor with the boys. So the title of this book is In High Heels on a Ladder, The Seven Power Tools for Designing Your Life. Now, the book itself is not a shtick. Although that was my shtick, this is not Uh a shtick. But it's about, you know, it's, it's alluding to the ways that we carry a facade throughout our lives. And what's Mm -hmm. behind the facade is this fear we have of being found out that we feel like we're a fraud. Inside that feeling like we're a fraud is shame Mm -hmm. that we have defined. We've defined this for ourselves. And so the book is a journey in which I share my stories of my life and I coach women through the book on how to do their own journey of self-discovery and ultimately finding their own path, their own, their path to wholeness. The power tools are the mechanisms I use to help the women do the work. And I have seven power tools that I use for, for supporting the women in the journey. Oh, very interesting. And I know that you know our audience and your audience when the book releases, and we'll talk about that in a minute can so totally relate to that because while, you know, I wasn't born into homelessness per se, I've got my own issues and we all have, every single person has that feeling of ineptitude and that imposter syndrome and so forth. So you're really hitting the nail on the head. And especially when it comes to women and, and you're gearing a lot of this towards women in leadership. Right. So why did you kind of target that direction instead of just like all women. Like, I mean, yeah. it's applicable to all women for sure, but yeah. Well, we have seen professionally, even on television, we're beginning to see that women are breaking some barriers of their rightful place. You right. know? Mm-hmm. And I believe that when women find their path to wholeness, the amount of women who are going to rise up into leadership is going to be profound because the thing that's holding us back, there is this this feeling Mm -hmm. more than anything, there is the internal shame and self-doubt that holds us back from owning our own authentic, true 
power and self-expression. And here's, I recognized recently how sick this world is. Mm-hmm. It's sick. We have, we have police brutality, hate crimes, war, a global pandemic. All of these things are just a demonstration to me of how sick the globe is. Mm-hmm. And I know that women, our, when we find our true authentic selves and our divine femininity, yes, we will have the vision and the love necessary to heal this world. And it's going to take women who are really willing to stand up inside a construct of leadership to make that kind, take that kind. I absolutely love that because I really, and I think probably our audience really believes that women are the ones we run the world. Like we're the ones who get shit done. And we're the ones standing behind the men who faces might be out there. Right. But really, and, and we do, we, we come from a place of our heart. Right. That you're giving them the tools and the empowerment right. to really live that out. Absolutely. Absolutely. This book is what I call a, a call to being a love revolution. Yeah, a global a love revolution. Global love revolution. It's a call for women to first find their self love mm-hmm. and then transfer that love. It naturally will happen. Love naturally desires to expand, it naturally desires to expand. So when you yourself recognize just as a being, you are love, period. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Then you begin to ex- spread that emotion, that feeling, that choice around the globe. So if we did it consciously, huh, imagine wow. the change we could cause in that way. Yeah. Just by loving each other and loving ourselves, especially. And leading our leading our lives, finding our passions. Mm-hmm. Our pur- I'm sorry, finding our purpose. And leading our purpose in the divine feminine energy of love. We will change the globe. Wow. Yes, that's powerful. Absolutely. Tanya, so when does your book come out? Uh, we're scheduled to launch May 1st. Okay. That's ah, exciting. So that is right around the corner. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm just taking all of this in. Okay, so it'll be May 1st. And I think this podcast is going to come out sometime in March. So. And we'll talk about this at the end also and make sure that all of this gets put into our notes, but where can we get the book? Yes. So the book will be distributed in on multiple places, Amazon, um, Amazon. I can't even remember. Probably Barnes and Noble. Barnes and Noble. Your website. My website. So for now, until we have the distribution distribution plan completed. Mm -hmm. The best way to find out more about the book is going to be at my website. It's tanyacomer.com. And this will be in the show notes. So you can. Absolutely. So, and C-O-M-E-R also pronounces Comer. Yes, absolutely. (laughs) Sorry. I'm still just, I'm just still (laughs) laughing at the last couple of years in my head. Every time I see your, your name on this, on the screen. (laughs) Oh my gosh. This is so amazing. And just, I love the fact that it is just breaking through you know, your internal barriers and, and working your way through love. Yeah. It's powerful. It is absolutely powerful. And, and it also transitions, you know, just circling it back to what we do as, so are you still doing interior design? I am. Yeah. I I figured it's my business. Yeah. But still think about that because when we're serving our clients, we're serving them through love because we're transforming their home and transforming their life. So you've got this in all facets. Absolutely. Absolutely. That is so cool. Y'all need to go over to her website and start taking a look for that book. And uh, we will be, when it comes out, Tanya, make sure you let me know because I can help promote it um, on on the platforms that we have. Because I just think that so many women need this because sometimes you don't even recognize the shame. Although I think that in this business, we find that the imposter syndrome is there. So diving down further. Exactly is, is, is where the work happens, not just Absolutely. recognizing that we all feel like imposters. So get over it. Absolutely. Hmm. Absolutely. Very cool. Imagine trying to bake a cake without a recipe. You kind of know what the ingredients are, 
but you don't know how to put it all together. After lots of hard work and trying different combinations, all you are left with is a sticky situation and a stomach ache. Babe, running an interior design business can feel exactly that same way. That is why I created the Interior Design Business Bakery. This is a program that teaches you how to bake your interior design business cake and eat it too. If you don't want to figure out the hard way and you want guidance to follow, a recipe that has already been vetted, someone that has already been there and done it and will help you do it too, then check out the year-long mentorship and coaching program, The Interior Design Business Bakery. If your interior design business revenue is below 300000 or if you're struggling to make a profit and keep your sanity, this is the only program for you. You can find that information at designedforthecreativemind.com forward slash business dash bakery. Check it out. You won't regret it. Well, girl, you know, I could have this conversation for the next hour. Um, I'm so fascinated and I can't wait to to get Me on the wait list too. for your book. So excited. But let's let's change the trajectory of this conversation and let's get to know you a little bit better in a unique manner. Okay. We've got a rapid fire question and answer session. Are All you right. ready? Dun dun dun. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's start with Tanya, do you have any tattoos? No tattoos. <laughs> what is your biggest pet peeve? Yeah. Um, I don't like when people do not accept responsibility for their mistakes. Oh, yeah. That's a good one. Yeah, for sure. Just want to punch them in the throat. <laughs> <laughs> or that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know. That was a little vicious, but I just came across that yesterday. So I'm, fe- yes, I'm still exactly. feeling a little raw like, to that. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> All right. What's your favorite ice cream flavor? Okay. I have two. Now, oh. I generally avoid dairy, but... Ice cream is like the thing that I love and it's my go-to everything. Mm. As a kid, I loved butter pe- butter pecan from Baskin Robbins and I yes. still do. Mm-hmm. And then more recently in life, I discovered pineapple coconut by haagen What? <gasps> it's like tropics in the... That sounds delicious. Oh, that sounds so good. It's delicious. (laughs) And it's, it's pineapple Pineapple coconut. coconut. Yes. That sounds great. Having the tropics on a spoon. It's delicious. Did you ever go to, I think it was Dairy Queen and they had their blizzards. Yes. They used to have a tropical and that sounds like it was probably similar to it. Oh, really? Yeah. I don't think they still have, I don't, I can't tell you. I haven't been to Dairy Queen since 1902, but (laughs) I don't know if they still have it. That long ago? Yeah, it's been a while. (laughs) But haagen here I come. That sounds so good. Oh, it's so good. Sounds so good. All right. Um, Where do you find inspiration? I find it everywhere. Every single place. When it comes to design though, I am really mostly inspired by my clients. Mm-hmm. I just, people are so interesting and fascinating when you really yeah. take the time, you know, to get to know them and listen and listen. I love so that. Fascinating. Yeah. yeah. What is your favorite book? Ooh, it's a little book. It's mm-hmm. called As a Man Thinketh. It's <gasps> a teeny tiny book and it changed my life. It was sort of one of the books that I read when I, after hitting rock bottom that really helped me to get the power of the mind, the power of my mind to yes. change the way my life. And how you can harness it. It's Absolutely. you're, you are not your thoughts. Absolutely. Oh yeah. I love that. Yeah. Yes. And I don't, I haven't read that book, but I've come across it multiple times. I will yep. have to grab it. Yeah. All right. It's by James Allen, as a man thinketh. James Allen. I'm writing that down. <laughs> grab that. Yes. I love that. Okay, if you could have one superpower, Tanya, what would it be? Ooh, ooh. Well, it's only fitting. I would have a magic wand or some magic something, and I can erase hate. I could just oh, poof, 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 poof away the hate. There would be a few people that would disappear <laughs> off of the earth. <laughs> One or two. <laughs> 
<laughs> that well, yeah, just erase the hate and circling back with love. Yeah. What does your morning routine look like? So most mornings I listen to an audio. I've recorded my voice with my mm. visions or my gratitude or my inspiration. Yes. I have several different audios. I have different mm-hmm. ones. I just pick one every day. Um, and that reminds me of my my dream, my desire, my goals, and inspires me in the morning. And then I I might write some new thoughts to contribute mm-hmm. to what I've listened to. And then I usually, or four, four days a week or five, I work out. And then I have my very healthy version of some kind of smoothie. Oh, yum. That sounds like a good morning. And after that, I always want a cookie, but I don't get it. <laughs> 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 yeah, that would kind of put a put a kibosh on. I would, but I think month. about it. I often <laughs> think about the cookie in the morning. <laughs> what kind of cookie? Like, what do you crave? What kind of cookie do you crave? I love caramel, and so I've discovered I love caramel cookies. Oh, that sounds it's, delicious. Yeah, it's little caramel chips, and it's kind of, kind of like a sugar cookie with caramel chips. Oh, delicious. that sounds really good. Oh, you know yeah. what you could do is you could have an oatmeal cookie. And then kind of call it breakfast. Well, I could. I could say it's like, yes, I could. Raisin. Yes. yes. Getting some the fiber. Same. Yeah. For, yeah. Just leave out all the butter and the sugar. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is too funny. Okay. So, so with that, since we're talking about food, what would be, what would you pick for your last meal? Oh my gosh. It is the ultimate indulgence for me by my standards. Mm-hmm. First of all, I couldn't have this meal alone. I would hire a chef who specializes in small plates. Mm-hmm. And I would have maybe five, six, seven courses. And there would be just these beautifully presented foods on these beautiful plates. You know how you go to like mm-hmm. a Thomas restaurant or yes. a restaurant. And it's all about the presentation. And it's as as delicious on the plate as it is in your mouth. And I just want all the food to look beautiful and be lovingly presented to me by the Frenchman who <laughs> wears his yes, wears the his, little uh, beret. Yes, yes, <laughs> and, his beret <laughs> and he prepares this lovely food and he's like, oh madame, please enjoy. And I just <laughs> <laughs> so it doesn't matter what he's serving. It could be sardines on one no, and that oatmeal it cookie on the be, other. Oh, it, it has, has to be beautiful. Be, it has to be beautiful, absolutely gorgeous. I have pictures of food on my phone that I just say one day I want to just have that thing that on right. my front of me that looks exactly like that. Oh, it has and to that's be interesting. Yeah, presented. and I want to share it with my besties. I love that. I absolutely love that. So it's very interesting because that goes back to your beauty and yes. and surrounding yourself and creating it. Absolutely. Hmm. <laughs> All right. Um. Let's see. What else do we want? What is your favorite productivity hack? Stand up, Mm -hmm. turn on music, dance, and then sit back down. Yes. Oh my gosh. Every time. It it totally gets your energy up. That's so funny. The energy. Absolutely. team used to think that I, they probably still do, but they used to think I was crazy because like before I would get on a call or before we would give a design presentation to a client that I was nervous about, I would literally stand up and either jump around or dance or do something because it totally gets your physiology going. Totally. You're the first person I've ever like connected with that said (laughs) the same thing. Yes. Y'all, if you're sitting around and you just need a boost of energy, get your ass up and dance. And dance, turn on music. It really helps. I mean, you can jumping jack and all of that, but music, it's just so much more fun. So much more fun. Do you have a theme song? Ooh, uh, (laughs) I'm every woman. Oh, I love that. That's a good one. Who sings I'm Every Woman? Who is that? I can oh. hear it. Is that, was that Whitney? No. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Wait, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. yeah. So I've got two. Mine is um, from Prince. So I think I'm dating myself. Baby, I'm a star. I, okay, go ahead. And I am Nina a Simone. Prince. I am a Prince like fanatic. I was, what's your second? My other one is Nina Simone. Baby, I feel good. Oh, I love that song. Yes, I don't think it's baby, I'm feeling good. It's just I'm feeling good. And yeah, I heard I that one that going through a, a, a trial in my life, and it has just resonated. 
because you crank that up and you sing with it. You can't really dance to that one like baby. I'm you can't. Star, but <laughs> it's so good. It is so good. I love it. Oh, so, so Tanya, I, I know our audience has just loved everything you've had to say. And I know that it's very likely that there is a heart that has been pulled a couple different directions, just listening, because it's something that we can all relate to and it resonates. So how else can we connect with you? Um, TanyaComer.com is your website. That's going to be in our show notes, but where else are you? Yes, I'm on the social media, but I'm not terribly active. <laughs> um, I have a Facebook page. Um, what else do I have? LinkedIn page, mm-hmm. um, Instagram you, page. What's your gram handle? Tanya Comer. There you go. Yep. All right. If you could put that in the show notes, that'd be helpful, Michelle. And then, Absolutely. Um, but the best way probably would be to go to my website and mm-hmm. get on my mailing list. There you go. Good, 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 good. That's so important. Well, I will definitely make sure that all of those details are listed in the show notes. And then when your book comes out, I'll be sure that we uh, notify our audience like through our emails and Facebook groups and so forth. So speaking of Facebook groups, y'all, if you can benefit from even more resources surrounding the business of running your interior design business and and meeting other beautiful souls like like Tanya and interacting and recognizing that that we have this community. Join us in my favorite, in my favorite, in my private Facebook group. Um, it's called the Interior Designers Business Launchpad. And then, of course, we had mentioned it earlier. I have a paid program that is a mentorship coaching program for a year, and that's called the Interior Design Business Bakery. And that's actually how I met Tanya. Yes. So there's amazing how the relationships just flow and grow. Absolutely. And the interior design business bakery is the wealth of information that Michelle shares with us to ensure that we are equipped to manage our businesses is phenomenal. And I don't care what stage of business you're in, if you're just starting out, or if you're a senior uh, business owner, like I was when I participated in the program, I was uh, 20 years of business owner. Yeah. Yeah. They'll see the benefit that Mich- of the tools that Michelle, you were giving to all of us. So thank you so much. Well, thank you, honey. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. All right. Well, and then- thank you for taking this time, Michelle, and inviting me to join you here today. I am oh very pleased uh, with the the. Um, I just respect what you're doing. Thank and you. The, the gift that you are, you are definitely a Taurus. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope to you, meet the gift that you are, not the gift that you give, but the gift that you are. Oh, and you, you are spreading love in such a profound way to this industry and to this community. I just love you so much. And I appreciate you very much. Thank well, you. For thanks, inviting. babe. Uh, yeah. If you guys could see me, I'm blushing. <laughs> Me Thank too. Thank you. That's We're so wonderful. We're over here. I know. <laughs> well, I can't wait to meet you soon. Yeah, no, it, it, it's been Zoom for two years. Oh, I know. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, with that, I'm going to sign off with the audience. And don't you go anywhere, Tanya. We're going to catch up. Okay. So until next time, y'all, thanks for being here. Hey, y'all. If you love the show and find it useful, I would really appreciate it if you would share with your friends and followers. And if you like what you're hearing, want to put a face with a name and get even more business advice, then join me in my Facebook group, the Interior Designers Business Launchpad. Yeah, I know it's Facebook, but just come on in for the training and then leave without scrolling your feet. It's fun. I promise you'll enjoy it. And finally, I hear it's good for business to get ratings on your podcasts. So please drop yours on whatever platform you use to listen to this. We're all about community over competition. So let's work on elevating our industry one designer at a time. See you next time.